The first reading of the script I found terribly important and it needs to be somewhere quiet where I can concentrate with no distractions at all. And I read it pencil in hand. And that's basically where the ideas come from. It's got to be somewhere I'm absolutely alone, quiet, I can concentrate. And I go through it page by page and every time an image or an idea suggests itself, I write it down on the blank page, you know, on the left-hand blank page. And that's where the ideas basically come from. And in my experience, if you're reading a new script and you nod off in the chair and it doesn't hold you, you nod off in the cinema. They can spend zillions uh, on doing it, but if it doesn't read well, it doesn't play well. Guy Hamilton, the director, said, uh, this is evil under the sun. He said it's a sort of fantasy world that we're creating, and he said it's the all the characters in the film are larger than life, and he said they're a sort of 1930s version of the international jet set. He said they should change clothes every time we see them, you know, 15 times a day practically. They were wearing something different. So I thought, wee! <laughs> no problem. OK, so that's what we did. Again, Geminal Rangel, this marvellous dressmaker, he was making a lot of the clothes for it. Uh, so that's what we did. So it's way over the top. Um, and it was, you know, it was huge fun to do. Well... Well, what a colourful outfit. Oh, oh, I'm so glad you like it. When you're designing a film, it's like doing a painting and you have to, um, it has to make a picture. So, I mean, whoever's on screen together at the same time, it should be a pleasing composition, colour composition. I mean, that goes for any film. Uh, when I say pleasing, I mean something, if you're doing something that's low-key and poor and all the rest of it, obviously they're not, uh, obviously they're not strong colours. Um, but you have to think of it like doing a painting, whatever the film is, whatever the film is. In the old studio days, the studios catered to who actors were and what they could do, and projects were constructed around their gifts and what they were and who they were and all the rest of it. When that doesn't happen anymore now. And so very often you get star actors who have accepted a script because they like the, the script or they want to work with that director or whatever, but they're actually unsuitable for the... Uh, uh, there's nothing in the character as written on the page that's part of their own nature. And so what you have to do in that case is take who they are, what they have to offer, and the character as written on the page, and you have to try and bring them together in the middle somewhere. Because, for instance, I mean, a perfect example is Peter Ustinov uh, playing Hercule Poirot in the two Agatha, those two Agatha Christie films, that he isn't at all what Agatha Christie described in the book, but one was able to take the qualities that he brought himself to the screen and the character and hopefully bring them together. I mean, I think it worked. I thought he was quite wonderful. Oh, it wasn't what Agatha Christie had written at all, but it was convincing. I thought it was truthful what he, what, I thought it was absolutely truthful what he did. Just by the by, I mean, he was the most wonderful actor to work with. He was just the dearest and nicest and funniest. It was like non-stop cabaret. You know, it was like cabaret time that started at six in the morning when he came in and just you spent the whole day just roaring with laughter. He was just a dream to work with. And he didn't, um, he just left the whole thing to me, you know. What would be my favourite costume in the film? I think it has to be one that I made for Maggie Smith, who we'd worked together a lot, many, many, many times, and we're very, very close friends. And it was made by Germaine Arangel. And I think it's maybe, I think it's probably one of my favourite costumes that I've ever done, ever. 
all through my career I've collected interesting fabrics, knowing that one day they would solve a problem, uh, which they always do. It doesn't matter how long you keep them, uh, one day they, they, they will solve something you didn't know quite how to do or whatever will be perfect for, for something. And this was a fabric that I'd found somewhere quite a short length, just enough to make a little jacket. And it had these oval spots on it, multicoloured spots, all different coloured spots, in lurex, so that they were uh, metallic and shiny. And I found uh, jewels, fake, obviously, fake oval, so on, so on jewels, that were just smaller than the ovals, which he, I mean, there were God knows how many, I mean, dozens and dozens and dozens. It was an enormous job. And he sewed a jewel on, a matching jewel, on each, um, uh, on each metallic spot so that you had the jewel with a tiny little border round it of the, of the metallic um, lurex fabric. Uh, and it was, an, it was an enormous job, you know, to do that. And then I made some uh, 30s, like pyjama trousers of it, with stripes of metallic bugle beads that matched all the colours of the jewels. So you had this, this, this sort of glittering spotty jacket with matching, exactly colour matching gawding trousers in, in stripes that went from top to bottom matching the colours of the... Uh, and I don't know why, it was just... Uh, it gave me a lot of pleasure uh, to do. Maggie looked wonderful in it. She wears clothes like a dream. How about a cocktail, Monsieur Poirot? Yeah. A uh, white lady, a sidecar, main brace, or between the sheets? Oh, if I could have a creme de cassis or a sirop de banane. Do you have banana syrup? Certainly. On a lot of films, actors become very attached to their costumes and want to keep them afterwards. On both of those films it wasn't actually possible, particularly with Evil Under the Sun, because we did huge publicity tours afterwards where we did fashion parades and things with the... so the costumes weren't uh, available, so the actors weren't able to, in that particular instance, uh, to have them. They went back to the production company.